So when you're editing video in Adobe Premiere Pro, you're essentially playing with time, and that's why you work in a timeline panel. You take clips and you shuffle them around and move them and put them wherever you want them to go. But Premiere Pro has a bunch of tools that allow you to dive a bit deeper and adjust time on a clip level. Today I'm gonna to be focusing on five things in particular. I'm gonna show you how you can play with the speed and duration of a clip, how you can manually set frame rates. We'll talk about changing the time interpolation, and then I'll show you the really powerful technique of time remapping, where you use keyframes to control time. All right, I've got my sample clip right here. You can pick this up at shutterstock.com. Now, one of the quickest and easiest ways to change the time and the speed of a clip is to use the rate stretch tool. So if you go over here to the tools panel, you can see it's right over here. Now I can click on this to activate it, or I can hit keyboard shortcut R, and that'll activate it. Now, right now, if I hover over the clip um, and click on it, it's not gonna do anything. I have to hover the cursor over the edge, and then you'll see it changes, and it's showing me the direction of which edge I'm selecting here. So I could grab it from the end of the clip and start to drag it, and that's gonna change the duration here. You can see I get the tooltip showing the new duration. And then as I let go, this is now faster, and that's indicated via this percentage over here next to the name of the clip. And there you go, much faster now. All right, so here's another sample clip. This time I'm gonna use a tool with a little more precise controls. So I'm gonna select the clip here, I'm gonna go up to the clip menu, and I'm gonna select speed duration. So this is the clip speed and duration dialog box. There's a number of different parameters here, but at the top you can see I have the speed controls, and it's showing me the percentage, just like the rate stretch tool does. And I can quickly increase the speed, or decrease the speed, and it's showing me, um, you know, it's showing me the adjustment here in the duration. So if I click OK, you can see that it uh, kind of trimmed this clip back. It has a new duration, and it's now much faster. So I'm going to open that back up. I can also open this up by right clicking directly on the clip in the timeline and select speed duration. Let me just take this back to 100%. The cool thing about this is I can go in here and I have a little more precise control. I can unlink the speed from the duration. So now I can increase the speed here. So let's bring it up to 150% again. And if I click on OK, uh, you can see it doesn't trim my clip back, but it does indeed speed it up. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. I'm gonna right click, open up speed duration again. You can see I can quickly reverse the speed if I want. And if this clip has audio, I can maintain the audio pitch to the best of its ability as I change the speed. And I can also choose to ripple edit. So let me show you what that does here. So over here, I've got another clip. And to make things a little more efficient here, I want this to ripple delete or ripple edit and automatically close that gap. Because if you saw before, I had that gap. So I'm gonna go over here and go back to speed duration. And I'm gonna activate ripple edit. And now when I increase the speed, um, I'm gonna link these together so it'll also increase the duration. And then when I click OK, you're gonna see this clip automatically ripple deleted. And last but not least over here, you have a time interpolation drop-down menu, and this lets you specify how you want Premiere Pro to interpolate these frames if you want it to sample them, blend them, or create new frames with this optical flow method here. Now, if you're working with footage that has motion blur, you want to play around with those different interpolation methods to find what works best for your project. In an ideal situation, if you are shooting the footage, you would want to shoot it properly. Like, for example, if you're wanting to capture something in slow motion, you would shoot it at a higher frame rate. If you don't do this, the computer is going to be manually creating those frames via one of these interpolation methods. An effect that I use all the time when I'm in Adobe After Effects is called Posterize Time, which lets you manually type in and kind of override the frames per second. So it's also available in Adobe Premiere Pro. So I'm gonna go over here to Window, and I'm gonna select Effects, and then I'm just gonna type in Posterize Time, and you'll find it under the Time subfolder. I'm gonna drop that on my clip here, and now if I go to Effect Controls, you can see I've got the effect here, and it's set to 24. So one thing that I like to do is to give this more of kind of a hand animated feel is I'll bring this down somewhere between 12 and 18. Now you can see it gives us a totally different look. Once again, this really helps you stylize footage if you're, you know, let's say you're trying to simulate old film or if you're even trying to take footage that was shot at 60 frames per second and just bring it down to 24. This is really a great tool. Now while Posterize Time lets you change the frames per second in a video effect, you can actually go change this on a master clip level. So I'm going to go select this clip in the project panel here, and then I'm going to go to Clip and Modify, 
and right here it says interpret footage. And at the top of this you can see it has a section for frame rate. So it's showing me right away the native frame rate that's coming from the file, which is 29.97. But right here I can click and I can manually enter frames per second um, and have it assume this frame rate. So if I type in 12 here, um, I can have it manually assume that. But you can see that it changed the duration. And not only does it change the duration, but this is gonna change all of the clips that are in all of my other sequences um, using this particular clip, so be aware of that. Now if you wanna be like a ninja when it comes to retiming your clip, you'll wanna learn how to do time remapping. So let me show you how this works. First, you wanna double click down here and give yourself some room to actually see what's going on, because. We're gonna be doing most of the editing and adjustments down here in the timeline. Now I'm gonna right click on this clip and then do show clip keyframes. And right here you can see time remapping speed. So now we have this horizontal line kind of right in the middle of the clip. And if I hold the control key, I can add these keyframes. So let me just go ahead and undo that. So what I need to do is for this, I want this to like fly in real fast. And then right as the sheep's legs kick, I'm gonna have it slow motion for that, and then it'll start back up and speed real fast. So it's gonna be a much more exaggerated movement here. So I want the first keyframe to be maybe right here. So I'm gonna control click there, and then I'm gonna come back here and it'll start speeding up right about here. Okay, so I have these two keyframes now, and the way you change the speed is you grab the horizontal line here. So I want, I want the beginning to be real fast. So I'm gonna grab this, and we're gonna drag it up and I can see the percentage tooltip there. So let's bring this to maybe 150 and then I'll bring the end here to 150 as well. And now you can see I changed the duration there when I adjust that. Okay, not much big of a difference there, but if I slow down this to say 50%, it's gonna be a noticeable difference. There we go. Now I need to adjust the transitions, smooth out the transitions between that. So I, for that, I just split these keyframes here. You click and drag, and then you can make adjustments here. And then you have a little keyframe. When you grab them, you have this little thing that you can easy ease those a little bit. This can be a little bit of a clunky experience here. You just have to practice and get used to this. What makes it so difficult is that it's constantly changing duration. Okay, and I can see there's a little bit of a weird effect going on with the time interpolation. So for that, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go to time interpolation. And let's switch that over to optical flow, see if that's any smoother. And I'm gonna actually render that out. Okay, now you can see that's much smoother. Okay, so there you have it. There are five different ways you can play with time inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And as always, if you wanna see more cool content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell.